So now we're making a circuit here that is similar to a recent circuit. We have a bright LED. It's an LED module actually. It has the LED, the resistor built onto it. There's a heat sink and uh, I attached wires to it. But in any case, it's made for five volts across it. Uh, and with five volts, you get about 200 milliamps of current and one watt of power. We are working with less voltage, but it doesn't really matter here. So we have a PNP bipolar junction transistor. Again, we need to handle you know up to 200 milliamps of current and uh, so I'm using the 2N2907 um, which can handle up to uh, 600 milliamps of current when it's switching so in any case you need a little bit of emitter to base current uh, to flow in order for a lot more emitter to collector current to flow you know it's many times maybe a hundred times maybe 200 times and so on but uh, in any case uh, you know 200 times as much current flowing that way versus what is flowing that way Whatever you got going through here, you're going to get a multiple of some number. So it's not exact. But in case, let's move on. You lose about 0.6 volts from the emitter to base. You know, approximately. A uh, green LED that we have there is going to drop about 2.5 volts at low current. You know, closer to 3 volts at a higher current. But we're purposely trying to keep current low here. And uh, we also have a shot key diode right there. So depending on what voltage you want, you add up the voltage drops. But it gets a little more troublesome because it's going through the emitter to uh, base right there. And therefore, uh, we just need very low currents. And uh, so they don't drop as much voltage at low currents. But in any case, there you can see the LED is on because we have uh, 4.2 uh, volts. It's uh, pretty bright right there. And I'm going to move this over. And I think I have the connections about as good as I can do. Um, so that's both the bright LED plus uh, that LED. Now we can go up to uh, 5 volts and uh, 5.2 should still be okay because it's a 5 volt module. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, probably just fine. So let's go back to 4 and we'll work our way down. So let's say we have a lithium ion battery, just a single cell or whatever. You can see that as the voltage goes down from 4.2 volts to close to, uh, now when we get closer to 3 volts, there's hardly any current flowing. Now there is still current flowing. I'd kind of like it to stop completely here at three volts, but uh, we can get down to, you know, about 2.5 volts, worst case scenario. So there's almost no current flowing. You know, of course the LED is a little bit dim right there. Let's see how it's doing at 2.6. So I'm using a different transistor than um, a recent video. And uh, with that other transistor and these components, I still had a very slight glow at 2.5 volts. Um, there you can see. So, you know, didn't stop current uh, perfectly, but this is probably a, a minuscule amount. LEDs can produce like a little bit of current, even at, uh, you know, a little bit of light. I mean, even at just a speck of current. I can actually uh, create some just with my body with the uh, indicator LED, but uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. So, yeah, that is the uh, main thing. We want to get as close to... Um, in this case, my goal was try to stop the current at uh, 3 volts, you know. But uh, again, this is not, you know, like a comparator where we're setting a voltage and right at that spot, it's going to turn off. We're going to get less and less current as the voltage goes down. Now, in an earlier video, I'm using uh, right now the shot key diode that I'm using. It looks like a regular diode. It's forward uh, bias, uh, a little glass one. Um, I don't remember what the package is called for the uh, glass ones, but I'm using the 1N6263 right there. I got it out of the Joe Nose Electronic Semiconductor Kit, which I recommend getting after you have uh, basic components because it has a bunch of different types of diodes and transistors. And uh, so if, uh, especially if you don't have any Zener diodes, it has a bunch of Zener diodes. So in any case, uh, we got, uh, that's the wrong one. I got, we want it forward biased. So this one's gonna work better. And I wired two of them in opposite directions. And uh, so I, this will uh, hold these pins very good, but you gotta get them in all the way right there. There we go. And uh, yeah, there we go. We got it lit. And I almost forgot what I was gonna talk about. The uh, shocky dial that I was using earlier, the little glass one, they're both shocky dials. This one's a lot bigger though. It's meant for handling more power. This is the uh, 15 SQ045. It can handle up to 15 amps. You know, that's probably absolute maximum though. And you can stop about 45 volts. We're not trying to stop, uh, you know, uh, more than about 0.3 volts approximately. 
uh, in this direction just because in the direction that it conducts easily that's probably about where it is but at low currents I'm thinking it's getting get closer to uh, 2 I'm thinking of doing a, a video soon where I actually test that out but uh, yeah we'll go to uh, uh, get that to 3 point uh, even 4.3 is fine but a battery lithium battery you want lithium ion you want want to get it above 4.2 volts and uh, now we'll go down to uh, 3 volts and uh, what was it before I think it was about 3 milliamps before with the other shocky dot now it's about 16 I do think we will stop by 25 though so this would still be you know protection but when you're stacking these uh, voltage drops they they all add up so like if all of them go slightly different because you slightly lower because you used different uh, components even though they're basically the same components then it could go down you know quite a bit or you know if they uh, you know drop more uh, voltage each one of them because you use three different uh, components than the three other components it can make a big difference right there so yeah now we got about four milliamps approximately and I think some of it has to do with how well I got like connections and stuff right there so you know again this is a prototype circuit it's on a breadboard things won't work out perfectly but you can see this uh, smaller one right there the uh, 1N6263 that um, I'm pretty sure is what I used to actually design this but I you know grabbed uh, this diode not putting a lot of thought into it um, when I originally started doing these recent videos so hopefully I didn't do that when I initially made these videos um, because uh, this is a reused diagram which I, I mostly been doing now because uh, I don't have as much time and also those videos didn't get a ton of views so might as well uh, recreate them and hopefully I did a better job filming it this time people will watch it longer and it will do better but yeah it's only helping to protect this uh, well a battery if you were using a battery we're just simulating it with the power supply and um, you know so we would like to get the current to completely stop at 3 volts but it's uh, you know just a simple transistor which people commonly have and uh, green LED of course that people commonly have you don't have to use this you could stack other um, types of uh, diodes but uh, or other semiconductors but in any case uh, yeah shock you down doesn't drop as much as a rectifier diode and uh, so actually I probably would just use a rectifier diode if I really was going to use this circuit and you know get it where it's almost not conducting much at like 3.3 or 3.4 volts or something that's kind of where I would cut it off that give me an even safer uh, margin right there so yeah this is fully adjustable I'm not saying this is the circuit to use just I, I want you to be aware of the principles involved with this circuit and again we're using the 2N2907 if it starts with 2N and it's a bipolar junction transistor whether it's NPN or PNP then uh, all the ones I got emitter to the left base in the middle collector to the right when you're looking at the flat side NPN and PNP have different chemistries so for the PNP you put the emitter towards the positive supply collector to the negative supply and uh, you know loads may be in different places but that's the direction the supply voltage uh, goes for the PNP with the NPN you'd put the emitter down there the collector up there you know you'd rewire everything else as well but uh, current just flows in opposite directions when you're using an NPN versus a PNP uh, otherwise the circuit can be exactly the same we got the exact same circuit as I did with the uh, NPN transistor 2N2222 except for all the components are on opposite sides of the circuit and um, you know of course the cathodes here they all have to be going to the negative supply and uh, the that's the uh, it's PNP so the N type material is head of the negative supply there whereas with the uh, NPN it would be NPN so the base for that one uh, heads towards the positive supply when it comes to the current um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that didn't get confusing. And I uh, think I'll end it there. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.